Well, good morning and welcome to our service today. Our online presence uh, in the Monmouth Ministry area, we're now calling Monmouth Praise. And we're hoping to bring services from around the ministry area. We're also hoping to look into the lives of characters who live in the area, uh, different kinds of ministries that go on in this place, and even ecumenically, we will sometimes look at what is going on in some of the churches of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So welcome to this first service as a part of Monmouth Praise. And we come from the church of Trellick Grange in the Monmouth ministry area. Welcome. self-taught basically that's quite hard work but I wouldn't have it any other way it's a it's a lovely it's a living instrument rather than electronic um, very temperamental it doesn't like the dirt it doesn't like the damp but um, I do enjoy it I've been up for a practice this morning and yeah it's it's nice because I haven't played it for about six months so it was nice to go back um, and yeah it's it's part there again it's part of the community it's part of what Trellick Grange is. We're lucky enough we've got 30 pedigree dairy shorthorns that have been in the family since the 1930s so we can trace every cow back that far and the same with the sheep um, and you know it's just it's in your blood it's, it's nature it's living it's working it's a vocation I can't imagine doing anything else. Our family have actually been here exactly 100 years this year um, they, my grandparents uh, bought it in 1920 and uh, then my father farmed it and then my brother and myself took over from him. The history of the valley is that it's uh, about two and a half thousand acres up here at Trellick Grange. Many, many years ago it was a farm that monks down at uh, Tinton Abbey used to use for pr uh, production for food for the abbey and uh, a, a, an abbey farm is known as a grange, hence Trellick Grange. Over the years it's been a traditional mixed uh, farm for, for Monmouthshire of beef, sheep, cereals, potatoes, root crops, that sort of thing. But in the last um, 15 years or so it's, we've specialised a bit more, diversified into different things as the market has dictated that we need to do. So. About 15 years ago, we went into these uh, free-range hens. We put up a building for 12,000. Most of the eggs go into the main supermarkets. We supply some local shops and, uh, and pubs and restaurants and things. The vast majority go into the supermarkets. Diversification-wise, other than the poultry, we went into um, energy, uh, solar panels and uh, did those over a number of years increasing the area of panels we've got and uh, then about five years ago uh, put in a combined heat and power machine uh, which uh, uses wood chip and converts that into gas which um, produces heat and electricity. The gas runs an engine which drives a generator which produces the electric and then the heat is used for various buildings and the poultry house and, and drying the wood chip that, uh, that feeds it. As a farming uh, valley, Trellick Grange is a renowned farming area because unlike a lot of Monmouthshire, which is predominantly um, grass growing because of you know, heavier soils, uh, Trellick Grange is blessed with a, a good, fertile, fairly easy draining soil. And so it's suitable for livestock and cropping. And uh, that was obviously one of the attractions to, to, to the monks at Tinton because they could grow grain up here as well as produce livestock.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Time of quietness in the presence of God as we examine our hearts. And we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say together the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our collect. And after our collect to celebrate the harvest, we will say together our first prayer. Lord of all creation, you gave us the fruits of the earth in their season and crown the year with your goodness. Help us so to receive your gifts with thankful hearts that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in want and to meet our daily needs. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our harvest prayer. Almighty Creator God, in your hands are the seeds of life, and you have blessed us abundantly. May we, in whom the seeds have grown, bear the fruits of love and generosity, May we sow that others may reap and rejoice in a harvest of plenty. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first Bible reading, please. First reading is taken from St Paul's Epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, 
He hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth for ever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there I will store all my crops and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, but God feeds them. Of how much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow thrown into the oven, 
how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So over the past few weeks, many of our churches in the ministry area have been celebrating harvest, a time when we have come together to give thanks for those who work on the land and in the sea, who provide the food that we eat. We also come say thank you to God for all the good things that God has given us. But in our readings, we have someone with a different attitude. And just before the reading that Tim read, someone in the crowd asked Jesus a question about inheritance. He wants his brother to share their inheritance with him, and he hopes that Jesus will take his side. Inheritances do cause trouble in families. A few years ago in the newspaper, there was a story about a person who had a collection of Chinese pottery, very valuable. The collection was in a museum, and after they died, the two youngest children wanted the collection to remain intact in the museum, while the two older children wanted their share. But Jesus would not judge in the case of the brothers, but instead warned the crowd to be wary of greed, because their life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then Jesus tells the story of the rich fool. The ground of a certain man yielded plenty, we can infer from this that there was a bumper harvest that year. And so the farmer goes on to talk to himself about the situation he faces, and he decides he must build bigger barns. In the Bible, a good harvest was a sign of blessing from God, and we know that when Joseph was in Egypt, he built bigger barns to store all the grain, and his actions were considered wise. But Joseph's bigger barns had a purpose, to feed the country when the famine came, so that no one would go hungry. The farmer in Jesus' story was not motivated by social concern. He probably had no machinery to gather the crop, but he had lots of workers, and I doubt if they were paid a living wage. It was these workers who harvested and stored the crop. And then who do you think was going to build those bigger barns? but the farmer never mentions anyone else, only himself. He talks to himself about his fruit, his storehouses, his grain, his goods. He cannot see anyone but himself. The farmer has no thought of God's provision or of his responsibility to others, but he believes he has secured the future for himself and is answerable to no one but God calls him a fool. And the Greek word for fool is used of those who rebel against God or deny God's existence. This farmer believes that he is a self-made man. He looked forward to sitting on his porch, gazing out on all his personal things that he had built up, his huge barns filled with food, and he probably would have sung Frank Sinatra's song, I did it my way or its first century equivalent. But God tells him, tonight your life is required of you. It was God who had given this man life in the first place, and now God requires his life back. It turns out that this rich man does not run his life after all. And then who is going to get 
all that grain stored in those barns. And so what did this parable say to us today? Jesus is not saying that we should not have wealth or possessions. And he's not saying that having wealth or possessions are themselves bad. But they become bad when they take the first place in our lives. Having more than enough food or finances can make life easier. But it doesn't necessarily bring quality of life. Some have more than enough food or money, but they are not happy. So I enjoy watching the television program, Location, Location, Location. And one of the main themes in this is people do not have enough money for what they want. So the couple with 500,000 in cash and mortgage actually want a house that's worth 600,000 or even 700,000. Whilst the couple who have a 200,000 budget want the house that's 300,000 or maybe 400,000. According to Luke, real life, or real wealth in God's eyes is found in the ability to give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And we can feel the need to accumulate more and more things because maybe we're anxious or we're fearful about the future. Jesus warns that there are all kinds of greed, but greed is just a symptom of a deeper problem. We feel empty or we feel that we lack something. We believe that we are not enough. And greed convinces us that if we have more, and if we get more, then we will be happy. But greed always leaves us wanting more and more. The antidote, Jesus says, is to be rich towards God. When we grasp that we are treasured by God, just as we are, with what we have, we are set free to be rich towards others. Bishop Augustine said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. If you find your heart is restless, if you find you are anxious, say to yourself, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. We stand to affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Our loving Heavenly Father, we look to you on this celebration of the harvest, giving thanks to you for all your goodness to us. We pray that in the days to come, we will not only celebrate your goodness, but we will share your goodness with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world that you love. We pray for a world where there is strife, where there is war, 
where there is hunger and where there is thirst. We pray for governments of the world, that they would learn to care for their people and to share with others in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, O God, for our own nation. We pray for our government. We pray for those in authority over us, that they would lead us wisely, especially in this time of pandemic. Give them wisdom to know the right thing to do at the right time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your church. We pray for Cherry, our bishop. We pray for all clergy of this diocese. And we give you thanks for all of the churches of the Monmouth ministry area, praying that you will bless them in all that they seek to do for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer. We pray for those who care for the suffering. We pray for those who have died in the faith. We pray for those who mourn their passing. Lord, grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the words of the peace. And of course, we cannot move around in church to celebrate the peace, the peace with one another, but we can nod in one another's direction. And if you're standing next to someone, you may share the peace more closely with them. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to live. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, all powerful and ever living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your spirit this bread and this wine, your gifts to us, that they may be the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. As he has commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory. We bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing. And at the last, receive us with all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in the one bread. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, his love is everlasting. A post-communion prayer. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in this bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us such reverence for all that you give us that we will make us wise stewards of the good things that we enjoy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together our final harvest prayer. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of the earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation, to the honour and glory of your name, for ever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look lovingly upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We're delighted to have you with us today for our Harvest Festival service. 
which uh, is a very important service to this community. And normally the church is absolutely full. For obvious reasons, we can't do that. So it's great to have you along with us online. So what are the origins of this tiny little church, which is set here in amongst the buildings and the houses of Tralick Grange? Well, the answer to that, it lies about three miles down the Angidi Valley, the Angidi being the, uh, the stream river that uh, flows right through the middle of Tralick Grange. And on the banks of the Wye is Tintern Abbey. And Tintern Abbey was a large establishment which needed uh, food to feed all the people there. And the, a grange is a farm belonging to the Abbey. And there were a number of these. And Tralick Grange is one of the granges of Tintern Abbey. So the Abbey was established in the 12th century and went on for uh, about four and a half, uh, 450 years uh, until the dissolution of the monasteries. Uh, when, the, when the monasteries were dissolved, the lands passed over to the uh, Marquis of Worcester and then um, on to the Duke of Beaufort, or the Dukes of Beaufort. Being brought up in Tradic Range, the church has always been a big part of my life. I've been church warden for, for many years and took over from my father back in, the, back in the 80s, I think. We live in changing times and, and, and a lot of uncertainty and worry. And I think we all need some stability and the church has over the, over the years has been a symbol of that stability. And I think we've all got to remember that although we may feel alone, we're never alone because God is always with us. Things, God never said things were going to be easy, but he did say he would be there for us. And we need to remember that. And I, I really hope that this little church will carry on being part of the community and a focal point. Whether you are, are deeply religious or whether you just want it because it, it, it's here and it brings people together, it needs to continue. And that's what we hope for the future. <laughs>